Welcome to today's market news where we go over some of today's highlights. In today's highlights, we have inflation concerns continue to rise. Pipeline outages has prompted panic buying, gasoline shortages, scooter startup Bird to merge with SPAC at $2.3 billion value. Wall Street will keep gorging on SPAC fees long after boom fades. Bill Ackman takes a $1 billion stake in Domino's Pizza. And lastly, we have the glorious Hertz making headlines again. I bet you guys forgot about Hertz. We have a lot to unpack in this video. You don't want to miss this. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified for my latest videos. If you want to get two free stocks, try Webull. Get two free stocks when you deposit $100 or more. To get the most up-to-date high growth stock news, my latest buy and sell alerts, and smart money market sentiment, check out my Patreon. It comes with private Discord and a full range of server benefits. All the links will be below under the description of this video. Dow slumps 500 points amid inflation concerns, and Nasdaq drops 2.5%. U.S. stocks declined sharply on Wednesday, led to downside by technology shares. Key inflation data showed higher than expected price pressures. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 500 points following its worst day since February on Tuesday. The S&P 500 lost 1.7%, while the tech-heavy Nasdaq Composite slid 2.5%. The selling intensified after the S&P 500 fell below Tuesday's low. A level traders were watching closely because of the intraday rebound one day ago. Once the S&P fell below that low, about an hour into the trading day, the benchmark fell even further. Inflation accelerated at its fastest pace since 2008 last month, with the consumer price index spiking 4.2% from a year ago compared to the Dow Jones estimate for a 3.6% increase. The monthly gain was 0.8% versus the expected 0.2%. Excluding volatile food and energy prices, the core CPI increased 3% from the same period in 2020 and 0.9% on a monthly basis. The respective estimates were 2.3% and 0.3%. Investors who may have been looking for a reason to line up on a stock market that was up more than 10% year to date found a good one, rising inflation. Chris Hussey, a managing director at Goldman Sachs, said in a note, Investors have been fearful of a pickup in inflation as it could squeeze margins and erode corporate profits. If price pressures run too hot for a sustained period of time, the Federal Reserve would be forced to tighten monetary policy. There are people who think that the Fed is not just behind the curve. They are maybe missing the point and by the time they start to play catch up, it's too late. Wall Street veteran Art Cashin said Wednesday on CNBC's Squawk on the Street. Tech shares, which have been under pressure this week and this month, led the decline again Wednesday as bond yields jumped. Shares of Alphabet, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, and Apple all fell more than 2%, while shares of chipmaker NVIDIA and AMD were also lower. Tesla slid about 3%. Strength in bank stocks and energy shares, which could do well in an inflationary environment, help support the broader market. JP Morgan rose 1%, while Occidental Petroleum climbed 6.5%. Chevron also traded 2% higher. The technology sector pulled off a big intraday reversal in the previous session, where the Nasdaq Composite erased a loss north of 2% and ended the day flat. The blue chip Dow, however, lost more than 450 points. The S&P 500 slipped 0.9%, but avoided its second straight 1% loss. The technology select sector, SPDR, is off by nearly 2% this week and 5% this month, as investors recess the group's high valuations in the face of rising inflation. Now that we're in talks of inflation, let's take a look at what's going on with the Colonial Pipeline. Colonial Pipeline sought Cyber Manager months before hack. Some of the takeaways, job opening posted well ahead of crippling ransomware attack. Pipeline outage has prompted panic buying, gasoline shortages. The company targeted in the biggest pipeline hack in history began searching for a cybersecurity manager two months ago. Colonial Pipeline sought someone with a master's degree in computer science to develop and maintain an incident response plan and process to address potential threats, according to the company's website. The ad also posted on LinkedIn and job seeking sites. This is Colonial Pipeline Manager Cybersecurity Job Posting. A criminal hack paralyzed North America's biggest fuel pipeline late last week, choking off almost half of the gasoline and diesel burned on the US East Coast. Gas stations across several states have run dry amid panic buying and soaring retail prices. Nationwide, the average retail price topped $3 a gallon for the first time in more than six years. 
The cybersecurity position was not created as a result of the recent ransomware attack, the company said in an email. We have several positions open as part of our long-term growth strategy around talent, as we are constantly recruiting top-tier talent across all functional areas of our business. Colonia executive set an end-of-the-day Wednesday deadline for deciding whether it's time to begin the process of restarting the pipeline. U.S. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm said on Tuesday. Now moving on to some SPAC news. Scooter startup Bird to merge with SPAC at $2.3 billion value. Some key takeaways here. Deal will provide as much as $428 million for the business. VCs have turned away from money losing scooter businesses. Bird's Right Inc. will go public by merging with a blank check company securing a new source of capital after venture capitalists largely lost interest in money losing scooter rental startups. A special purpose acquisition company called Switchback to Corp. will take Bird public and provide as much as $428 million in funding to the business. The deal has an enterprise value of about $2.3 billion, the company said in a statement Wednesday. The transaction includes private funding from Fidelity Investments, which had previously backed Bird, as well as a credit facility from other firms. A former Uber Technologies Inc. executive, Travis Van Der Zanden, helped start Bird in 2017. It dropped electric scooters onto the sidewalks of major cities and let customers remotely unlock and rent them using an app. The model was widely copied, including by Uber, and turned Bird into one of the fastest startups to reach a $1 billion valuation. It took only a few years for the scooter fad to fade. Bird and its closest competitors, Lime, cut staff and dialed back operations. Uber also retreated. The coronavirus pandemic dealt a further blow when people curbed travel and fled the city centers the scooters companies occupy. SPACs provide a path to fundraising and the public market seen as more friendly to cash burning companies. Last year was by far the biggest for such deal, which have slowed in 2021. Bloomberg first reported in November that Bird was in early stage talks to merge with a SPAC. Switchback 2 listed in January and at first indicated it would seek to combine with an energy company. In a statement, Bird highlighted its green energy bona fides and said it would introduce additional vehicle options, such as bikes, in a bid to reduce use of gas cars. We plan to scale our platform to provide our low carbon transportation services to more people in more cities around the world, said Jasmine Wallsmith a spokeswoman for Bird. The backing from Fidelity represents an apparent reversal for the investment firm. In December, Business Insider reported that Fidelity was looking to unload some Bird shares at a loss. The ticker symbol for Switchback 2 Corp is SWBK and is currently trading around $10. Since we're talking about SPACs, now let's take a look how banks are going to still make money from SPACs all the way until 2022. Wall Street will keep gorging on SPAC fees long after boom fades. Some of the key takeaways, banks have at least $8 billion in unbooked revenue for SPACs. SPAC fees to support banks through 2022 even as deals dry up. Wall Street will continue reaping reward from its embrace of blank check companies for a long time, even if the record-breaking boom in listing comes to an end. Investment banks have earned as much as $15 billion from underwriting and advisory work with special purpose acquisition companies since the start of last year, according to the research firm Coalition Greenwich. At least $8 billion of that revenue hasn't been booked yet and will show up in banks' results over the next two years, the data shows. One of the main reasons is that arrangers of blank check IPOs in the US get paid in chunks, with less than half of their typical 5.5% fee paid when a listing is complete. The rest is deferred until after the SPAC finds a target which can take up to 24 months and completes a merger. That's good news for the top SPAC houses like Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, and Credit Suisse at a time when regulatory challenges at a time when regulatory challenges are starting to send a chill through the market. Previous SPAC listings will provide a very strong tailwind to equity capital markets revenue through 2022, said Amit Gol, co-head of European Banking Research at Barclays. It's not game over for the banks, said Nikolai Rusanov, a finance professor at the University of Pennsylvania Warden School. Blank check companies completed $181 billion of U.S. listings over the last five quarters, accounting for 55% of all IPO fundraising in New York, according to the data compiled by Bloomberg. At the peak of the frenzy, more than 50 SPACs unveiled plans to raise a combined $17 billion during a single week in February. SPACs slowed down. Number of new blank check deals plummeted amid regulatory chill.
The pace of the new deal slowed to a trickle, with only five blank check companies submitting registration documents in the last week of April. U.S. regulators have been warning investors for months about the potential risk around SPACs. Last month, they spooked dealmakers by floating the potential of different accounting treatments for one aspect of SPAC deals, a move that has forced many companies to review their results. While deferred underwriting fees will still be rolling in over the coming quarters, regardless of these hurdles, there are risks to the as yet unbooked revenue. Chief among these are the possibility that a SPAC doesn't find a target or that a large number of the SPAC's investors redeem their holdings before a deal goes through. Still, most of the fees will find their way to banks' top lines, said Eric Lee, Coalition Greenwich, London-based head of transactions banking. Banks also have a variety of other avenues to earn money from blank check companies that are already trading, from helping them find targets to advising the startup seeking to list via SPACs. Others will work on arranging a share sale, known as a private investment in public equity or pipe deal, to support the merger. U.S. blank check IPO rankings. Range of banks have profited from SPAC listing surge. Citigroup at the top number one, Goldman Sachs at two, and Credit Suisse at number three. Even relatively unknown players are getting a slice of the pie. Continental Stock Transfer and Trust Co. has carved out a profitable niche holding that cash from many SPACs, which are required to keep their assets in trust until an acquisition target is found. Banks have been under assault for a long time by fintech, by a decline in interest rates over 30 plus years, by globalization and global competitors, said Mark Yusko, chief executive officer of Morgan Creek Capital Management. There is plenty for banks to worry about. A temporary slowdown in SPAC issuance is not one of them. Some executives have recently sounded a hopeful note on future SPAC revenues. Deutsche Bank boss Christian Suing last month touted the enormous dynamics around the firm's blank check businesses. He pointed to the prospect of future SPAC work for its advisory unit, saying that businesses shouldn't be underestimated even if the fees going to its ECM franchises decline over time. Europe has also been seeking to attract more SPACs while the pace of deals slows in New York. Amsterdam is emerging as the venue of choice for some of the region's highest profitable blank check listings. Frankfurt and Paris have also been seeing success, and London is considering changing its rules to become more attractive. Even Nasdaq Inc. Nordic Bors has set up a new framework for such offerings. SPAC IPOs might not even return to orders of magnitudes we've seen, but they aren't going away. Wardens Rusanov said, Now let's switch it up and let's see what the big boys are doing. Bill Ackman says he's built a stake in Domino's Pizza, owns roughly 6%. Some of the takeaways, investor sees upside in company, city's delivery strength. His blank check company is near separate deal for iconic brand. Bill Ackman has taken a stake worth almost $1 billion in Domino's Pizza Inc., adding another big name consumer company to his portfolio, and said his blank check firm is nearing a separate deal to take an iconic brand public in the coming weeks. Ackman's Persian Square Capital Management owns a little under 6% of the pizza's chain's shares, he said Wednesday at a conference. He said he bought into Domino's when the shares dipped to roughly $330 and after selling out of Starbucks, following a run-up in the coffee company's stock. Domino's becomes the latest restaurant chain that Persian Square has invested in following its stakes in such names as Chipotle Mexican Grill, McDonald's, and Burger King owner Restaurant Brand International. We like the restaurant industry. Interestingly, we've never lost money investing in a restaurant company, Ackman said during the Wall Street Journal's Future of Everything conference. I think we've never not made a lot of money. Pizza restaurants have largely benefited over the past years during COVID-19 lockdowns as consumers flock to delivery and takeout meals. Ackman said he was drawn to Domino's in particular because the company owns its own delivery infrastructure, which means it doesn't need to rely on services like DoorDash or Uber. That is an important competitive advantage in a world where you want to deliver pizza for $7.99. It's hard to do that with a delivery service taking a massive cut of the proceeds, Ackman said. Domino's was first and best in terms of delivery technology. The billionaire investor, who is known for waging high-profile boardroom battles at companies like Canadian Pacific Railway and Atomic Data Processing, said the chances of him doing the same at Domino's are very low. We welcome investment in Domino's and appreciate the confidence and support expressed for our company and our brand. The company said in an emailed statement, Domino's shares rose as much as 6% before pairing the gains. They were trading at $430.02 as of 1.42 p.m. in New York 
up 1.8%, giving the company a market value of $16.7 billion. Domino's rose 31% last year, beating the S&P 500 index gain. As dine-in restrictions start to ease across the country, delivery-heavy chains like pizzerias had largely been expected to see their strong sales start to taper off. But that hasn't happened yet. Domino's revenue of $983.7 million last quarter was up 13% from a year prior, even when lapping last year's early pandemic bump. Bear case. Ackman acknowledged the bear case for Domino's is that it has been benefited from the restriction placed on restaurants for dining services and that there's more competition for delivery. He said he didn't believe that was the case. Ultimately, our view was actually a lot negative during the COVID environment. There weren't football games where you invited 12 of your buddies and ordered Domino's. There weren't college campuses in session, he said. Our view is there will be continued growth in that business. Ackman also said he was cautiously optimistic. His blank check company, Persian Square Taunting Holdings, could be close to announcing a deal to take a company public in the coming weeks. He said he has been in deep discussion since early November with a potential target. And while he hoped to have announced a deal by the end of the first quarter, he said he was getting close. He said he would have an announcement in weeks without disclosing any other details. It was sufficiently attractive and interesting that it was worth devoting six months of our energy to, Ackman said. Interesting, a potential PSTH SPAC merger may be announced very soon. The ticker symbol for Pershing Square Taunting Holdings, Bill Ackman SPAC, is PSTH and is currently trading around $24. And lastly, let's talk about the infamous Hertz. Once Doom Hertz rebounded so much, even Redditors were right. Renter got boost from economic recovery, used car value surge. Stockholders set to recover $8 in cash, warrants for holdings. During the depths of the pandemic, it wasn't even clear that Hertz Global Holdings Inc would be around today renting out cars. It is, and surprises don't stop there. The winning bid for the several Wall Street giants to buy the company out of bankruptcy makes bondholders whole and, even more astonishingly, recover about $8 a share for equity owners. It's rare for shareholders to get anything in Chapter 11 cases, let alone once involving businesses so badly hobbled by COVID-19 lockdowns. And $8 stands out for another reason. Before the day traders made GameStop Corp the hottest stock on earth early this year, Hertz was their plaything after its bankruptcy filing. They nailed the price. Even if they don't get new shares, every single one of them paid no more than $6.25 for a stock even Hertz said at that time might be worthless. Add it all together and it's one of the most remarkable rebounds in recent memory, which almost perfectly mirrored the wild V-shaped recovery in the US economy. The company, its creditors and equity holders can thank a shockingly fast stimulus spurred recovery in travel demand and consumer sentiment. Even two months ago, shareholders were going to be wiped out by its bankruptcy plan, and a few days ago they were in line to get about $2.25. A global semiconductor shortage is hampering new car sales, which is also helping Hertz, because used car prices have spiked as a result. It can charge customers more and it's getting top dollar when selling superfluous vehicles. No one could have foreseen this confluence of events, said Marion Keller, an independent consultant who was on the board of Dollar Thrifty Car Rental, which sold to Hertz in 2012, who would have known that the car companies wouldn't be able to ship cars because of semiconductor shortage, and that it would happen as the economy is reopening and travel is rebounding. She's not surprised the company got intense interest from buyers. There should be a bidding war. She said in an interview before the best and final offers came in. Part of it is the brand name. Part of it is international. They can be successful. They just have to have the right people in place. Things aren't perfect at Hertz. The company sales, which hit an annual record of $9.8 billion in 2019, haven't returned to pre-pandemic levels, but optimism abounds as the economy booms and Americans, bored after being stuck in their homes, hit the road in rental cars. Whatever drew their attention, bankers, investors, and financial advisors convene in Miami this week to determine Hertz's future ownership. The auction pit, Nighthead Capital Management, and Certer's management against a group led by Centerbridge Partners, Dundon Capital Partners, and Warburg Pinkett. Nighthead and Serators won with a plan that values Hertz, including debt, at around $7.4 billion. The proposal offers full repayment to debt holders and hand institutional and accredited equity investors around $240 million in cash and the chance to participate in either a $1.6 billion rights offering of warrants for about 20% of the reorganization.
organized company that leaves out types like college students who speculated on Hertz after last year's bust on Reddit. But plenty of mass affluent individual buyers think 401k millionaires and those making more than $200,000 annually who troll Reddit's Wall Street bets community will qualify. Leading up to the event, the competitors were already dangling Chapter 11 rarities like full debt recoveries and some cash for shares. The drawn out fight was nearly unthinkable in May 2020 when Hertz hurtled into bankruptcy protection after pandemic shutdowns sent its revenue from healthy to near zero in just weeks. Shareholders usually get nothing in Chapter 11 proceedings with all money recovered going to creditors instead. Initially, that was going to be the case with Hertz with a reorganization plan filed March 2nd completely wiping out equity holders. The upside value that everybody sees here is really a function of the company's ability to meet its business plan projection in 2022 and 2023. Hertz lawyer Thomas Loria said at a bankruptcy hearing in April, that depends on having a properly sized and aged and fleet in those two years. And that's where the global chip shortage could turn into a problem if it keeps Hertz from buying enough new cars or forces it to keep buying used cars, with their customer alienating smells and stains at elevated prices. All of the upside that people are so excited about could be lost or impaired, Loria said. For now, the chip disruption is a benefit. Used rental car prices were up 32% in April from a year earlier, according to Mannheim, the national largest used car auction house. Not only does that mean Hertz gets more when pairing its fleet, but also the company doesn't have to depreciate the value of cars it still owns as much, which helps earnings. The market for used vehicles recovered, which was a lucky result for Hertz in hindsight, said George Schultz, founder and chief executive officer of Schultz Asset Management. If it hadn't, then the requirement that the company sell off its vehicles would have meant a haircut for debt holders even at the most a senior part of the capital structure. Hertz come back with a full recovery for bondholders after they traded around 10 cents on the dollar a year ago has been an amazing return for the credit investors, Schultz said. But the question is whether post-bankruptcy, Hertz can avoid further surprises. Right now you have the win at your sales, but what happens if the next cycle hits, he said. Hertz Global Holding is trading around $5.72 and it's trading under the ticker symbol HTZGQ in the over-the-counter markets. And that wraps it up for today's market news. Thank you for stopping by. I will appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe buttons and I will see you on the next one.